Michael doesn't have the best start to the day. Here he is, waist deep in the Pocklington Canal. At least he's still smiling. It was the rope that did it, and the shifting of the boat. So, yeah, it was bound to happen at some point. Now I've been in the canal. I can report that it's squishier on the bottom than you'd think. A little cold. Definitely doesn't smell good, especially once you've mashed up the bottom. And it's hard to get out of. I ended up having to more or less climb over here towards this field of duck poop and cow poop and what I hope is just mud. I don't have any cuts on me, so I'm pretty sure I don't have wild disease. But, uh, yeah, good fun. I don't recommend going in the canal. Ugh. At least I'm full of water. It makes squishy noises. I didn't laugh. I didn't. You were standing there laughing. Only after you laughed. When you did, before you laughed, I was like, I took it really seriously. I yeah, you came running out. I was okay. in the bathroom, and all I heard was this. <laughs> I didn't hear the splash, I just heard, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I didn't hear yeah. a splash. <laughs> my, I knew Michael was starting the engine. So whenever he gets on the back of the boat, it rocks. So I was like, well, there's the rock of him getting on. And then, and then there was the rock of him coming off. <laughs> oh, sh. <laughs> and I, I thought, oh, that doesn't sound good. So I ran to the dog hatch and put my head down. <laughs> and I didn't laugh. No, no, you made it outside before you started laughing. You got to the end, you saw me in the water, you you, you expressed concern, and then you started laughing. Only because you were laughing. The first thing you said to me is, you better get a picture. So I'm like, oh, I started laughing after I hit the water. I was like, all right, everything's intact. Shit. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, yeah. And he hasn't got changed yet. He's still in his way. No, I'm still, yeah. I'm, God, I'm, I'm just... still in the outfit. I'm like, well, why not just go do the weed hatch and everything? Well, uh, you know, I was, I was like, why not go do the weed hatch while I'm waiting for Joe to get ready? I've I've taken George for a walk, tied him up, and it's like, hey, no problem. Yeah, I'm just going to just gonna go back there. And I swear, I was walking across. I felt one foot hit the rope at the same time that the boat shifted. I was sat down. I don't know which direction it shifted. I did not move. <laughs> All I know is all of a sudden it was just like, well, there's the boat going past real fast. So well, that's just... the sensation of cold water. Did you just slide down? I, I did. Actually, what I did was do everything I could to make sure I didn't hit my head on the gunnel. Yeah. So I was just, as I was sliding, I was just hands on and pushing forward. Like I just didn't want to hit the gunnel and I didn't want to hit the pier. So, because after my yeah. first couple head injuries, I'd really rather avoid any more. And last night, didn't we joke about, you said something about, you nearly had some kind of accident. And I was like, don't have it here. Because we're not even near a road. We're like in the middle of nowhere. So I was like, oh, yeah. I don't want to have to call an ambulance. <laughs> oh, you stuck a knife. Stuck a knife. Didn't even draw blood. Just like got it into the end of my thumb with the tip and went, ow. And she's like, don't get into any injuries. I can't deal with it. Yeah. Like, fair enough. Yeah, it's all about me, obviously. <laughs> like, you're standing there with a severed thumb. What have you done to me? Yeah. Anyway. I've got, I was going to sit down and relax. <laughs> so, I'm yeah. just glad that it's like it was forecast to rain, but I'm just glad it's July because if this had happened in like January. Oh, it had been a real problem. Like if, if that was ice water, that would have been really bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, the reality was I went in, I had firm footing, albeit, you know, with a couple of inches of mud. So I was like, okay, I can, I can try and move. And then I started feeling around looking for whether or not there, because I could not push off of it to try yeah. and get, to try and pull myself out like in a pool, because it just went way down so underneath you me down as and I pushed. Sunk. Yeah, yeah, like I just I made a divot. It didn't <laughs> didn't go up at all. I went down. So um, so then I was like, well, there's this bed of reeds beside me, and the bed of reeds has to have its own footing. So I need to try and climb over the bed of reeds. And sure enough, in three or four feet of movement, I was able to incline up to the point that i could just climb back onto the pier but and yeah it was on... embarrassing nobody here no cows even oh. george didn't even witness it because he's around the corner yeah i was worried about where george was oh, where George? Where George? So. Um, yes because we're sprung at the moment so the, the rope comes back along the gunnel and we we try not to do that but when the when the 
here the moorings too short you have no choice yeah and we always say be careful because the rope's in the way and then so we're on our way that way to the end of the canal <laughs> and um there's quite a lot of weed so i'm not looking forward to this at all basically. but i am feeling like it's all uphill from here so <laughs> I, I feel like i've i've successfully lowered my expectations in the next few hours <laughs> and um, oh, God. my phone was in my pocket so it's it's sitting in a container of rice right now trying to dry out yeah so fingers crossed but we might have to get a new phone yeah which would suck because my phone doesn't get backed up very often because we don't have wi-fi that is reliable blah 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 but your phone is four years old so it's fine so anyway go. um we're going that way george is over here joe's gonna walk i'm going to get dry well redressed i'm gonna send joe through the back i'm gonna open the back so she can open the back get the tunnel cover down and then by the time i'm changed i'll be able to go down there do the bloody weed hatch <laughs> then you can swing the bridge and we can go <sighs> i'm glad you were laughing like i was really i was actually panicked and i was half laughing and half crying because it wasn't nice to see your husband in the canal, as funny as it is. Yeah, well, you know, at least I had the presence of mind to tell you to get a shot. <laughs> she stopped videoing because I didn't look happy. I, I, I took, you said I'm like, why am I supposed to look happy? But, you know, next time, for next time, I go in the canal. Definitely take video if I'm if I'm okay. Okay. Yeah, if I'm not okay, I'd rather not the world know about it. But anyway, <sighs> right, anyway go. I'm going to go get changed. Yeah, I'm going to get changed. George waits patiently while Michael showers and puts on some dry clothes, and then we're finally ready to go. The bridge is pretty heavy to swing, I don't think it can get much use. Finally it's time to go. You shouldn't really moor on a swing bridge landing, as usually other boats will need to use it, but we're very confident that there are no other boats moving on the Pocklington Canal right now. We're only the third boat to visit this year, so we decide that it'll be okay. The Pocklington Canal is fairly clogged up with weeds at the moment, and judging from the reeds in the centre of the navigation, it's been quite a while since the boat has been through this way. It's not that far to the second swing bridge, and this one's even heavier than the first one, so Michael moves up to give me a hand swinging it. He cruises on without checking I can get it closed again, and it takes me three attempts to get it shut all the way. He doesn't actually make it that far ahead though, as the weeds are so dense in the water. The Pocklington Canal was completed in 1818, making it just over 200 years old. It's nine and a half miles long and runs from the junction with the Derwent to East Cottingworth to the market town of Pocklington, as the name suggests. Currently you can only navigate for seven miles till the Bilby Arm. The Pocklington Canal Amenity Society are working hard towards getting it fully restored. It's a wide canal which allowed keels that operated on the River Derwent to use it, and the locks are 58 feet long, which means that some of the locks are going to be quite a snug fit for Perseverance as she's 57 feet long. Coal, lime, manure and other goods were transported to Pocklington from Hull on a weekly packet boat. Corn, flour and timber were transported out of Pocklington on the return trip to Hull. There's been no commercial traffic here since 1932, so after that date the canal was neglected and soon became derelict. Like with so many other canals, it was proposed in the 1960s that it should be filled in. Thankfully, the Pocklington Canal Amenity Society was formed to save and eventually restore the waterway. There's some structural works taking place at Hag Bridge, so it's shrouded with scaffolding. Luckily, the navigation and towpath are still open for us. You can see how clogged the water is with weed. It's honestly so stunning up here, the towpaths lined with wild flowers. It's slow going through all the weeds in the water, the canal would really benefit from a few more visitors. The towpath's pretty deserted too, we don't see another soul on the whole of the stretch.
Garden Lock is pretty shallow, just three and a half feet, and there's a swing bridge across the middle of it. The downstream paddles are operated with these fairly unusual wheel mechanisms. It looks like some local boats may have been moving along this section as there's a noticeable improvement in the weed situation and a clearer channel in the centre. There are quite a few swing bridges on this canal, the next one's kept open so that's one less for us to swing. There's some CRT staff working on the next bridge and they kindly swing it for us. The next swing bridge is just before Melbourne Basin. The visitor moorings in the basin look quite inviting, but we'll continue along the canal as we want to make it to the end today. We arrive at Thornton Lock and soon a small crowd of gongooslers have gathered. This end of the canal seems much more popular with walkers and I guess seeing a boat along here is quite a rare sight. A rise of just six feet on this lock. I start by opening the gate paddle on the opposite side of the boat as this will minimise the amount the boat is shifted around by the incoming water. When the lock is about half full I open up the other paddle to speed things up. We'd heard that this canal had had water shortages recently, but that clearly isn't the case at the moment. Water is pouring over the top lock gates at Walbert Lock. The walkway is on the outside of these lock gates, which means there's a little trap door you need to lift to stop it from hitting the paddle mechanism as you open the gates.
The reeds are so overgrown here, you can't actually see the canal from the towpath. We're almost at the limit of the navigable section now. The next lock is still under restoration, so you can only travel as far as the turning point at the Bilby Arm. That looks ominous. What happened to the blue skies of a few minutes ago? It looks like we're sailing through the weeds into a storm. As well as being the end of the current navigation, this is also another silver propeller location we can tick off the list. That's our 23rd collected so far. We thought that there might be a mooring here so we could stop for lunch, but there isn't, so we decide to head back to the basin at Melbourne. The canal's hardly visible here. It's a good job we're unlikely to meet another boat. Michael backs into the basin and onto the very welcome visitor mooring. So we are, we have arrived in sunny Melbourne, <laughs> not Melbourne, Australia. Suddenly very sunny. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of strange. It's gone, it was blue earlier today and beautiful. You know, this morning it was a little bit gray and then it cleared up, it was nice and blue. Um, I'm wearing shorts after taking my swim this morning, it felt reasonable. It also was the only thing we could find that was dry. And uh, it's been really comfortable all day. We got up as here as far as Melbourne Basin, um, but the canal does actually continue on. This is where you need to stop to get the um, silver, propeller. silver propeller, which is our 23rd. Third. Third? Third. Um, and uh, and yet you can continue on to Bealby and the Bealby Arm, which is actually the current limit of navigation. It was opened up a couple of years ago. And I had this idea that we'd get there, we'd stop, we'd have lunch, maybe I'd walk to the end and it would just be lovely. And we got there and I walked around like the non towpath side thinking I'd like get a view of Michael, but the basin is completely shrouded in trees. I couldn't see you at all. Yeah, and then you I were turned like... down it and I made it about... 45 feet before I ground it out. And then you can't see me, so you're just going, Jar! Yeah, <laughs> I was just yelling towards the end of the canal, because I thought if you came around at the end where you could see me, you'd at least get a funny shot. 
Well, I had to walk all the way around because on the f near side, like the first side, I couldn't see you at all. Yeah. So, yeah, it was... Uh, well, basically, it just turns out that the BLB home is, is effectively, uh, a, a, well, a winding hole. So it's a bit of a anticlimax when you get to the end. Yeah. And it was funny because as I was making the turn and I'm backing up to the actual sign that says end of canal, um, that's when the big cloud comes up. I mean, the cloud had been yeah, there in looming the in the distance. And, and it's getting odd. really close and it's getting really dark and there's, and there's lightning. there's these odd cracks of thunder in the distance. Yeah, and it's like, okay. So and like I, in my head, I'd been like, we can stop, we can stop, we can stop. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't it's stop. like, no, we can't stop. We got to go back and we got to at least stop at the lock landing. So that led to, well, I ducked inside to get my raincoat and stuff and to take my laundry off the front because my laundry... It's not laundry, darling. It's canal. It's my canal clothes. The canals, <laughs> clothes I was wearing this morning have been sitting on out on the deck uh, on the bow, taking advantage of the sun to dry out. Um, my cell phone has been sitting inside of a bunch of rice, taking advantage of the sun to dry out. <laughs> so all of a sudden there's this like threatening rainstorm. So I'm running back into the boat. I just ditch the boat while it's floating and I go running inside. And before I can get outside, Joe's like, Michael, where'd you go? Yeah, because he fell off the boat this morning and I, all I can see is his boat floating with no... With no human. <laughs> so it's like, oh God, he's gone for a swim again. Michael! Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, get it's on the back. raining on us. Yeah, and it's like, get on the back, starts raining, push down. Uh, we get to the first lock and there is no lock landing i like it. i was like we'll just stop on the lock landing because there's no one moving um, i mean there is actually one there it's just it's so overgrown that you can't see any of the like if there's bollage or rings or whatever they're just gone so we stopped in the lock quickly and had some food yeah and then came down another lock and ended up in the basin i'm glad we're here it's really nice yeah it's beautiful and you know like it was still threatening rain kind of all the way down yeah. and as they turned and re reversed up it just went blue again yeah. and it's like you know this huge spot the blue sky over there so it's definitely been hard nice. work like yeah. the pocklington like with what with the weeds the locks are not heavily used so they're quite difficult and they are um those like, wheels look like they make the locks convenient but they're really, they're really heavy really and the heavy gates are heavy and, and a couple of them are disabled so you just sort of spin them for a while before you figure that out yeah and uh but, like, why is this not opening? But yeah, it's just beautiful. Like, and there's so much wildlife around. So much wildlife. Yeah. yeah so many butterflies nice. and insects and. And and these stinging, well, biting midges that have have covered me in little sores now. <laughs> so that's good. Also, yeah, th those things are like Satan. I swear. And we got a really friendly welcome from another boater in the basin. Um, who told us about all the local amenities um, and she was just off to the shops and I was like oh what time is it open to and she was like oh I think it's already shut so she couldn't go <laughs> but it has said, in fact shut it's open at 10 tomorrow yeah. I really fancy an ice cream but we can't get one uh, not tonight but we could do early breakfast. tomorrow morning if we and there well, is... I'm not sure ice cream for breakfast <laughs> is acceptable there is, um, there is a pub obviously it's now back open but I don't think we'll be going unless there's a table outside. Yeah. yeah, and like, there's no one here. Like, we walked, we got all the way to Melbourne Basin this morning before we saw a single person on the towpath. It's just deserted. Mind you, from there on, we saw a lot of people on the yeah. towpath. <laughs> Lots yeah. of people looking at the locks. That's always nice. Yeah, and some kids watching us in there. And they were <laughs> opining of the idea that, in fact, was the one boy, that was the boy, right? Yeah. Because yeah, I couldn't quite tell from the voices. But, um,. <laughs> He was like, I'm pretty sure the toilet's just a hole over the water. And I was like, no. And then, um, and I was like, should I explain that the, you don't really want a, a hole in the bottom of your boat? Anyway, <sighs> and there's a boat over there from Hereford Basin, so. Which was surprised to see. <laughs> Most of them say Pocklington. Yeah. Actually, a lot of them say Pocklington. Yeah. That one says Crook, oh, Crookley Hill. Crookley Hill, I don't know where that is. But yeah. Generally, you expect when you get to some place this remote, this remote from well, specifically remote from Pierfrey Basin, like yes, I'm our sorry. boat's from Pierfrey Basin. This one's from Pierfrey Basin. That's kind of weird. <laughs> so yeah, here we are. We're here. We we have another silver propeller uh, notch on the probably not bedpost. Anyway, we're done. And thank you very much. On the duck hatch. Yeah, on the duck hatch. That's good. Yeah, sure. There's, uh, we got a notch on the duck hatch. Um, I always thought there should be little duck markings for the ducks that you run over, but anyway. I don't run over any ducks. Good. Try not to. Come on. All right. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe, of course, also to Minimalist Maximal Velocity if you want to get a lot of our older and um, eventually up-to-date time lapses. And um, hit that bell if you want to get notifications. <laughs>
There we go. Boom. Shut up. Off. Your head's cut off. My head's cut off. Face is cut off. The, um, uh, oh, not Montgomery. Melbourne. Melbourne, that's on. But, uh, but yeah, we, we have a place to get to and people to see. No, we don't. Hmm? No, we don't. Yes, we do. Yeah. Like the entire IWA. Uh, yeah. We'll talk about that later. This is getting edited out. Just send a video for me, please. Hmm? <laughs> please send a video. <laughs>